So I'm sitting at James Harrod's desk. James is one of our <clears throat> um, ever hardworking customer service guys. We got Jeremy and James. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, and these guys, man, they are on the phones constantly. So when you call PS Audio, this is here he is right here. Here's James. He picks it up and. They spend hours on the phone helping people out with their, their questions and their stuff. And he has some, check this out. You ever see anything like this? See this little, he push this thing. This is an electric fly swatter and it puts a high voltage charge on this <coughs> the, the screen. And if there's a big fly going around here, they'll bam, you hear this bam, and this fly just explodes. <laughs> and he also has, the, this is a good one. You ever see one of these? <laughs> Sorry for the for those. Uh, oops. Now you gotta be careful. This thing will shock you. <clears throat> um, I should keep this around in case I say something wrong. Oh. Okay. Uh, David in Ringmer, Sussex, England. Wow, far away. So David asks Paul, "What's the best file codec to use when ripping CDs?" Ah, good question. I have opened a CD file directory with my iMac, and they are stored at AIFF, um, and they are stored at 16441. Is it better to rip them as 2496 from the CD, which is the maximum my DAC will play? And if so, what is the best, AIFF or ALAC? So, <clears throat> well, um, whew, AIFF. Let's talk about that first. AIFF is Apple's version of WAVE, W-A-V, which is, uh, I don't remember what the acronyms are for. One's the audio interchange. Anyway, um, <clears throat> those are uncompressed, straight off files from however you rip your, your media. So AIFF and WAVE are essentially the same thing. AIFF is a little better because AIFF allows in its, what we call its header, the, the place where the information, the metadata is stored. So AIFF, you can put in, oh, things like cover art and, um, uh, oh, the, the, the artist's name and all that kind of good stuff. In, in a WAV file, you really can't do that. WAV files do have headers, but generally most programs don't pay attention to them. So when you see WAV files, it's usually one, two, three, and then maybe it'll have a little bit of the artist's name in there. But it doesn't have the same metadata capabilities as AIFF. ALAC is, I believe that stands for Apple Lossless Audio Codec. And that's the same as FLAC, which is the free lossless audio codec. So you probably heard the two. ALAC and FLAC. Now those are lossless compressed files, both ALAC and FLAC. They'll take a file and they'll compress it down to about half and they'll do so without loss. And that's a pretty cool trick. So when you encode in ALAC or FLAC, then you get about twice as many tracks on the same level of storage. When you play it back, it has to decode that back into essentially a WAV file or an AIFF. And w one quick note about that, there are a number of people who believe that a ALAC or a FLAC encoded lossless file does not sound as good as an uncompressed lossless or uh, a WAV file or AIFF. And there's some merit to that. Now, what's interesting about that is we can show very clearly that the bits are identical. So when, when they say it's a lossless file, it really is a lossless file. There are no bits lost. So how could they sound different? Well, depending on your hardware, what happens is the process that your computer or your server or whatever is, uh, your, your music player is going through, you have a lot more computational activity going on as you decode that FLAC or that ALAC file. And depending on your hardware and how they've configured it, that can start jittering the power supply and you'll actually get different sound quality on a really revealing system. But 
as far as sound quality based on the veracity, uh, the honesty of the bits, no, they, the bits, bits are bits, are, are absolutely the same. Okay, so what was the other, oh, yeah, all right, key. Should he record it in, what was, what did he want to do, 2496 from the CD, which is the maximum his DAC will play? Well, that's called upsampling, and CDs have 16 bits, and they are sampled at 44.1, 44,000 times a second, actually divided by two because we've got stereo. Oh, no, no, that's actually accurate. You know, it's, it's the Nyquist. So uh, it, it's double, the Nyquist basically says whatever the maximum that you want to get out of something, you have to at least double the sample rate from the highest notes that you want to play. So 20 kilohertz has to be 44. So in order to make the filters work, they set it at 22 kilohertz, uh, and then uh, uh, 21, whatever, my math is, skills aren't all that great. Anyway, whatever, uh, yeah, 22, so 44.1 is, is how they arrived at that, because uh, you have to sample at twice the, the bit rate that you want to actually play back in order to get uh, fidelity out of the thing without any kind of aliasing, which are artifact stuff you don't want, right? So by upsampling, you can get 2496, 96 uh, being twice the sample rate of 48 kilohertz, which is what most recording studios of that era, uh, they, they, they recorded everything at 48, then they downsampled it to 44 for the CD. There's always that little bit of a mix. So that's what 96 kilohertz is. And the 24 bits, so bits has to do with dynamic range. The, the greater the number of bits, the greater the dynamic range, but there's only 16 bits originally recorded. So if you add eight more bits to get 24, there is no more information. The only thing you can do is what's called dithering, and you can add some dither to it, some uh, random noise, which can help in some of the lower resolution bits, but not recommended. You're not going to get anything more out of it. Higher sample rates. Years ago, I might have said that it was better because it uses a different filter. But in general, no, I, I, I would not upsample it. It takes more bandwidth. I can't see any advantage to it. So I'd keep them at 44.1. Last thing, if you're going to play this stuff back and you have some 44.1, and you have some higher resolution things, get a program called Bit Perfect. I think it's $10. And you put that onto your Mac. And now, whatever sample rate is native to the, the music will be what's played back. And you obviate an entire bunch of crap inside of the Mac that makes things sound better. It runs it through an automatic upsampler. And if you, you want to avoid all of that. So for 10 bucks. It's a great tweak, and you'll have much better sound than you would if you hadn't put that in. Sorry for it being so long. Thanks for the question. Bye.